So in the last video, we talked about ERC, a kinase that is regulated by MEK, and in fact regulated by signals outside the cell, such as growth factor receptors. And um, we talked about how ERK is phosphorylated and activated by MEK. And now in this video, we're going to talk about ERK substrates. ERK is a kinase that can phosphorylate over 100 different proteins, many of which turn on genes that push the cell into S phase. So we're going to start here with ERK which is phosphorylated and active. Now, ERK can be in the cytoplasm or ERK can be in the nucleus. So some percentage can be in the cytoplasm, cytoplasmic, some percentage can be nuclear, and so ERK can be phosphorylated substrates in both locations. So we're not gonna learn all 100 substrates, but we're gonna learn a number of them in this video. And you're gonna see a pattern of these substrates being phosphorylated and activated and going to be turning on genes. So turning on genes, what kind of proteins turn on genes? Transcription factors turn on genes. So a lot of the proteins we're going to talk about are transcription factors. And let's introduce our first transcription factor called June, also sometimes known as C-June. So June is a transcription factor. And I've drawn here a serine at position 36 and a serine at position 73. So ERK can phosphorylate June and activate it. So these are activating phosphorylation events. And when June is active, June can go and turn on genes, which we'll talk about later. Uh, another transcription factor we'll introduce is MYC, sometimes known as CMYC. Uh, I've drawn a serine at position 58 and a serine at position 62. ERK can phosphorylate that transcription factor. Did I say that? MYC is a transcription factor. When it is phosphorylated by ERK, MYC becomes active, which then can bind promoters and turn on genes. Another transcription factor, FOS, sometimes known as CFOS. Uh, I've drawn ERK phosphorylating one serine at position 374. And again, this is an activating phosphorylation on FOS. What is FOS? It's a transcription factor. Um, so this phosphorylation will help activate FOS. Um, but there's another serine I drew that's not phosphorylated by ERK, but it is phosphorylated by a kinase that is phosphorylated by ERK. So now let's introduce, let's throw another kinase into the mix here, RSK. RSK is a kinase, which can be phosphorylated by ERK. And when RSK is phosphorylated by ERK, it activates RSK, which actually can go phosphorylate its own set of proteins. Uh, but what RSK can do is it can go into the nucleus and phosphorylate FOS, which helps activate FOS. So now we've got three fully active transcription factors that are going to turn on genes that are going to push the cell into S phase. But we, these genes are, these uh, transcription factors are very important, so we really need a lot of them. If we're getting the signal to go through into the cell cycle and make more cells, we really need lots of these transcription factors. So how do we make transcription factors? Well, transcription factors will help make transcription factors. So we're gonna introduce another transcription factor called ELK1. And when ELK1, which is a transcription factor, um, is phosphorylated by ERK, ERK will activate ELK1. ELK1 is a transcription factor. It binds promoters. And what promoters will it bind? It will bind the promoters of genes such as MYC and FOS. So now we get the MYC and FOS genes turned on more. So you get more gene transcription, translation, and now you make more MYC and more FOS protein. So ERK can directly activate the proteins MYC and FOS, and then it can activate transcription factors which activate the production of MYC and FOS. So ERK really wants these proteins present in high amounts, and it wants them phosphorylated and active. So you can see how ERK can attack this problem multiple ways. So the end result of all of this is that these transcription factors, FOS and MYC, let me move out of the way here, I'll move over here, um, FOS and June and MYC, these transcription factors are gonna be phosphorylated and active, and transcription factors bind promoters and they turn genes on. And uh, we're gonna talk about some of these genes in later videos, but the one gene we're gonna definitely talk about in a later video is the cyclin D1 gene. It is the key gene that will push the cell from G1 into S phase. Um, so ERK, the ERK pathway feeds into all these transcription factors, which can then feed into the production of cyclin D1 protein. 
via turning on the cyclin D1 gene via transcription factors. Now, all of these transcription factors turn on other genes as well, but we're not going to talk about those right now. Um, you could look up the uh, promoters that all these genes bind, and they do play very important roles in proliferation, um, but we'll just talk mostly about the cyclin D1 gene. So ERK affects many transcription factors. It can also phosphorylate many other things, and it plays roles in other parts of the cell's life. Um, this is talking about the cell's proliferation. Uh, I will add one more thing ERK can um, phosphorylate and regulate, and that has nothing to do with uh, the cell cycle. Um, and that is when ERK phosphorylates a protein called BIM. So ERK, when it's phosphorylating these transcription factors, is playing a role in proliferate, regulating proliferation, pushing proliferation. BIM is not a protein that is about moving cells through the cell cycle. BIM is an apoptotic protein. In fact, a pro-apoptotic protein. BIM likes to trigger apoptosis when it's functioning. And you can watch videos uh, that talk about BIM and what it does in the cell to trigger apoptosis. So BIM is a pro-apoptotic protein. And I will tell you that ERK can phosphorylate BIM. Now, what do you think this phosphorylation does to BIM? It wouldn't activate BIM. You don't want to trigger apoptosis when you've got the signal coming from outside the cell saying to go through the cell cycle. And that is, in fact, is the case. This is not an activating phosphorylation. This is an inhibiting phosphorylation. Remember, when proteins become phosphorylated, it puts this negative uh, group, this phosphate group on a protein, that can uh, change that protein's conformation. It can change its interactions with other proteins. So phosphorylating a protein, uh, while every other protein we've seen ERK phosphorylate activates it, this is an inhibitory phosphorylation. Putting this phosphate group on BIM um, actually inhibits its activity. So I should draw that line from ERK to BIM a little different. Sometimes when you're looking at these pathway figures, uh, you actually see the line drawn a little differently. It's got a little stop at the end. So that's actually an inhibitory phosphorylation, not an activating phosphorylation, an inhibitory phosphorylation. So ERK can phosphorylate and activate many proteins, and now I'm showing you it can phosphorylate and inhibit BIM protein, which makes sense. You would want to inhibit apoptosis when you're getting signals from growth factors, for example. So this is, these are just a few examples of ERK substrates. You can, in fact, look up more ERK substrates if you're interested in finding more about ERK. Um, but this is some ways in which ERK regulates cellular proliferation and now also apoptosis.